and uh, thank you KK for a nice introduction about mine. And today's session, it's about finance for non-finance managers. In this session, I will first take you to the agenda of the today's evening present process, which interaction, which has already been done. And I will talk about the account types and rules, and account qualifiers, fundamental assumptions and principles in preparation of the financial statements and accounts, and then the basis of preparation, accrual and cash basis of accounting, and then touch upon the capital expenditure and operating expenditure, and then go on to the financial statements and its components, talk about the accounting bodies, the major accounting bodies in the world, and then touch upon the most important topic of the day, the COVID-related accounting issues. Before interaction, I thought I should present time management stuff. 24 hours split into three parts, eight hours of work, seven hours of sleep, nine hours of three HFS. What is three HFS? Three H, health, hygiene, and hobby. And three F, family, friends, and faith. Three S, service, soul, and smile. I think PMI is doing a great job in this service, soul, and smile. Right, getting to the subject. Accounts, finance means always depends upon these three rules and account types. And every in every accounting, the accounting is done from the business perspective. Please bear this in mind. Accounting is always done from the business perspective. And then there are only three rules in accounting and three account types. Personal account, real account, and nominal account. What is a personal account? It's a loan account and share capital account is the exam are the examples of personal account and the rule is debit the receiver and credit the giver. Real account, cash, finished goods, receivables, they are all forming part of real account and the rule is debit what comes in and credit what goes out. Third one and the last. Nominal account, example income and expense. The rule is debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains. Please don't worry about the rules. Slowly, I will introduce you how to get the rules to, to use in accounting language. Right. We talked about the account types and rules. Now, coming to the account qualifiers, there are only five qualifiers in the whole gamut of accounting. One, assets. What is what are assets? Assets are the stuff which is which are owned by an entity or an organization. Liabilities means stuff which is owed to third parties by the organization. Equity represents the amount of money or capital introduced by the owners. Number four, income. Income is the revenue generated by the entity. Number four, and number five, expenditure. Obviously, the expenses incurred by an entity during a particular time frame. Entire accounting will depend upon assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. Right. We spoke about the account types, account rules, and the qualifiers. Now, fundamental assumptions which are necessary in preparation of financial statements. Assumptions, going concern. This means that entity will continue to operate and will be in existence for a long period of time. This is called going concern concept. Consistency. Whatever rules, whatever assumptions, whatever policy which I have, which have used in the current year and I will use in the next foreseeable future. Which means whatever the accounts, assumptions, everything is made consistently applied over the period of time. Accrual means expenses which is not yet being paid at the year end or month end should be booked in the books of accounts. This is called accru accrual based accounting. Now, principles, prudence, or conservatism. This means all estimated future losses have to be recognized. 
future incomes and gains cannot be recognized. This is called conservatism or prudence. Substance over form. This is very important. A transaction has to be analyzed in substance over a legal form. This is very important in deciding the accounting principle and recording of transactions and materiality. This is very key. All the accounting principles and policies will be based on materiality, which, is, which means what is important. In certain cases, materiality will not apply. For example, in cash, it has to be correct. If one rupee is gone on embezzlement, that is not a material that has to be correct. Therefore, materiality has to be applied on a case by case basis. Now, we spoke about basis of preparation accounting. One is accrual basis, and the second one, cash basis. Accrual accounting is an accounting method that measures the performance and position of a company by recognizing economic events regardless of when cash transactions occur, which means whether you paid salaries for the month of March or not, the expenditure need to be booked and the liability, if the expenditure is paid, you have to debit the expenditure and credit the bank. If not, you have to recognize the liability. Accrual accounting is considered standard accounting practice for most companies, which means any commercial establishment, all the commercial establishment which is incurring, they must follow accrual basis. Only one example, the government-based accounting is a cash base. Cash basis accounting means only when the cash inflow or outflow happens, the transaction is recorded. Which means government accounts are based on cash based accounting. Railways, for example, they are on cash basis. However, the ministry is being considering moving to accrual basis and they are working out how to convert the cash based accounting into accrual based accounting. Major distinction between capex. Capex, as you all know, is the capital expenditure. Opex is operating expenditure. Now let's talk about capex. Capital expenditure gives benefit over a number of years. Today, if you buy a plant and machinery, the benefit of that plant and machinery will be accruing to the enterprise over its estimated useful life. Capital expenditure is non-recurring in it, which means we don't incur this expenditure on a regular basis. It happens once in few years or as and when the need arises. Capital expenditures incurred in acquiring permanent assets or improving their existing capacity. Which means currently you are operating at a particular capacity. If you want to increase your capacity, the expenditures incurred in increasing that capacity will qualify as a capital expenditure. Capital expenditure helps in increasing earning capacity of the business and this is shown as your assets. I will explain to you what asset liability is. Basically, you know the distinction between capex and opex. Opex, the economic benefit is accrued the same period, which means if you pay salaries for the month of March, meaning the benefit of that expenditure is, in, is accrued to you in the month of March, right? Revenue expenditure is of recurring nature. You, you pay salaries month on month. You pay utility fees month on month. Right, those things are called recurring business. You got revenue expenditure. Revenue expenditure is incurred to managing the day-to-day -day activities of the organization and maintaining its earning capacity and fixed fixed assets, repairs and maintenance. All those things will qualify as an operating expenditure. Revenue expenditure helps in maintaining the earning capacity of the business. However, capex will increase your earning capacity whereas the revenue expenditure incurred will maintain the earning capacity of the business revenue expenditure is shown in the debit side of the profit loss account now coming to financial statements what are the components incur i mean you have in a financial statements balance sheet balance sheet is a snapshot of the assets, liabilities, and equity of the business as at a particular date, which means you say balance sheet as on 31st March 2020. The balance sheet has assets, 
on the one side represented by your liabilities and equity on the other side profit next one profit loss account profit loss account is for the period or year ended here we record all the transactions relating to the particular financial year which means from april to march generally so we call profit and loss account for the year ended or period ended statement of changes in equity this is coming as a part of the movement in your equity account opening balances of your accumulated reserves plus current year profit or loss and closing balance this is called statement of changes in equity cash flow statement which is also part of a statement which means how did the organization spend its money on various activities such as operating activities investing activities and financing activities so the cash flow will represent all these activities in a particular format and last but not the least notes to the financial statements notes means the basis the assumptions and the accounting policies which were which are all used in preparing the accounts will be elaborately explained here so that the reader can make best assessment and judgment about the quality of the numbers and make decisions accordingly you may ask why we do accounts because there's a listing requirement in india that you should record all the transaction publish if a listed company you must publish all the results for the investor to make an informed decisions now what are the components the in the financial statements we say property plant and equipment previously it used to be called fixed assets in the current terminology we call them property plant and equipment next current assets what are current assets your stocks your receivables your cash all the assets which can be liquidated within a 12 months period is called current assets anything which cannot be liquidated within 12 months time is called non current or fixed assets which means your land and buildings will qualify as fixed assets your property plant and equipment plant and machinery your computer fixed assets all those things will form part of non current assets or property plant and equipment anything which can be liquidated within 12 months time i repeat will fall under current assets similarly current liability your trade payables yeah other payables will be a part of current liability where your, your next short term bank loans will form part of current liability one quick example is oh, current asset minus current liability will represent the working capital of an organization if the current asset is more and current asset is less you have no working capital issues however if your current liability is more and current assets are less you have working capital problem which means in other words it's called current ratio current ratio is one represents good business anything less than one means you are struggling for your day to day operations that's not a good sign non current liability again all liabilities will months will be classified under non current liability suppose you have a bank loan for say for example for 6 years right the 12 months due will be reflect will be disclosed as current liability and the balance 5 years will be shown in non current liability which means the reader should know what are the current obligations and what are the non current obligations intangibles classic example is your goodwill any deferred revenue expenditure any advertisement cost incurred in promoting a product will will be captured here and then it will be amortized over a period of time it's called goodwill which you can't touch and feel it's called intangible assets and the equity again talks about the shareholders fund equity represents share capital and accumulated reserves which means profit or loss will be disclosed classified under equity section income you all know revenues generated by the entity will be grouped under income all expenses will be club and disclosed in the under expenditure column right these are the major components in financial statements right 
we, we talked about balance sheet, profit and loss accounts, stakeholder changes in equity, cash flow and notes. One important thing in balance sheet is if you look at any non-financial organization, which means banks, as compared to a manufacturing organization, the format will be different. In, an, in a manufacturing organization, property, plant and equipment will be coming first item in the asset side. Whereas in banks, cash and bank, balances with reserve bank, other banks will be shown as a first item in asset side. This means the balance sheet of a manufacturing organization is prepared under the order of permanence. Whereas in a financial institution, it is prepared under the order of liquidity. In a bank, what is more important? Liquidity of the bank is more important as against permanence. Whereas in a manufacturing organization, permanence is more important as against liquidity. Therefore, if you look at the balance sheet of two different types of sectors, financial industries will prepare balance sheet in the order of liquidity. Non-financial sectors will prepare the balance sheet account in form of permanence. This is a key difference, please bear in mind. Now, we talked about accounting bodies. In India, we are governed by the Institute of Chartered Accounts, which is set up by an Act of Parliament. In the USA, it is AICPA, American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. In the UK, it is Institute of Chartered Accounts in England and Wales. One important difference in India, if I'm a chartered accountant appearing from Chennai or Kerala, I can practice across India. Same way in the UK also. However, in the US, if you go and write an exam in a particular state, for example, you write an exam in Denver and qualify the CPA, you can practice a chartered accountant as a CPA only in the particular state. This is a key difference. All the Commonwealth countries will follow. The UK pattern of CA. Now, coming to the COVID issues. As you all know, COVID has a lot of impact on all of us in the day to day life, in the way we operate business. And the going concern of an entity is seriously impacted. What is going concern issue here? If the entity, if the profit is there, it's fine. But if there's an accumulated loss, which has wiped out your capital and you have serious issues in your working capital issues, which means the company, the organization is struggling to perform and its going concern is in question, which means the accounts has to be prepared in a different basis. However, we should ensure Accountants, we as accountants should ensure that going concern is not impacted. How do we do that? We have to ensure that management has made sufficient resources available to meet its current and non-current obligations. If, there are, if, if, a, if an entity is able to meet all those things, then even though they, are, they have issues, if they have representation, if they, if they demonstrate that they have enough resources available with it to meet its current and non-current obligation, then we can safely assume going concern is not an issue. Next one, inventories. Inventories means your stocks, stock in trade, which means which is available for resale. So what is the major problem here? Net, in accounting standards, we have to value at year end all the stocks, either at cost or at net, realizable value which is whichever is lower why because i said prudence or conservatism i should represent all the values at the current realizable value more so with inventories inventories should be recorded at the net realizable value today the net realizable value is seriously hampered which means i may have to recognize the difference between the cost and the net Realizable value, we call NRV as a loss in the income statement. Next, obsolescence. Before this lockdown, nobody assumed this will happen. Unfortunately, things are different now, which means 
whatever stocks we bought, we placed, we stored in the warehouses may not be moving as expected, which means it may have, it may become slow moving or obsolete stock. Those things have to be considered in your inventory valuation. Third, normally production overheads will be allocated to inventories, right? But however, during this lockdown period, these, these overheads cannot and should not be inventorized because this is not normal production cost. It is idle time cost and it is against the principle of inventory valuation. And then third point, impairments. What is impairment? The value in use minus the forecasted future cash generated from the business. If the future cash flows from the business is more than the current value used, there is no impairment. However, if the future cash generated by the business is less than the current value in use, the difference between the two is recognized as impairment loss. Am I clear? If, if the future cash generated from the organization, from the business is more than the value in use, there is no impairment problem. However, if the future cash generated is less than the current value in use, then there is an impairment loss, which need to be recognized in light of the current lockdown and future business estimates, because business is not going to be the same and life is not going to be the same. It has impacted big time. Coming to intangibles, previously I said intangible goodwill. Previously, goodwill was amortized in a particular fashion. Today, because of the lockdown and the future business changes, goodwill needs to be recognized much faster rate. It needs to be amortized faster or it should be charged off the income statement at the earliest. Which is important. Next point is recoverability from issues in the customers. Today we all know business is impacted severely. Customers, they don't have business and they'll, they, whatever you, you need to do, you have to extend credit period and then more than normal credit terms need to be extended. RBI has recently done a, a great policy of giving a three months moratorium. That's only for bank loans. However, customers normally 90 days, 60 days, 180 days, probably today you may have to increase the credit period. And here you need to assess two things about the customers. One, ability to pay and then willingness to pay. These two things you should bear in mind while dealing with customers because they may have serious issues in repaying your, your, your money. If you do, selling is easy, selling is easy, but recovering money from customers is very difficult. Therefore, while assessing credit terms, you need to have these two things in your mind. One again, ability of the customer and the willingness to pay. Both are important, it's not R. It's the ability and the willingness. If ability is there, willingness not is there, then you are in trouble. If the willingness is there and ability is not there, still you are in trouble, therefore, is the ability to pay and willingness to pay is key, which needs to be borne in mind while fixing the credit terms. Depreciation of assets. I said fixed assets, property, plant, equipment, which means this benefit, the cost is captured in your balance sheet and the cost of this is amortized or charged up over its estimated useful life. For example, if you buy a car for business and if life is say five years, you charge off 20% each year. That's called depreciation. However, during this lockdown period, assets you can claim the standard allows you to claim depreciation even during this lockdown period. Right. Next, borrowing cost. If you are incurring borrowing cost for capital projects, that can be capitalized in the normal course of business. But today, lockdown period. There's no construction activity happening, but you have borrowed money and you are incurring borrowing cost. Such cost cannot be treated as fixed cost. You need, it needs to be charged off in the income statement. We cannot capitalize borrowing cost during this lockdown period because it does not constitute the cost of the fixed assets. Right? And entities will have 
this issue we need to be very careful if you're incurring major capital projects during this lockdown period we need to segregate the borrowing costs incurred during this lockdown period and borrowing costs incurred prior to the lockdown period those things need to be segregated and treated accordingly mostly all industries will have insurance claims insurance claim for fire theft and everything today we, they should they will also have in, in insurance policy for loss of profit or dis dis disruptions therefore we need to if you put a claim on a timely basis for business losses and business interruption when you put a claim you have to justify all those claim costs if you are claiming therefore we need to be extremely clear about all the points which mentioned above you, insurance company will ask details and records before settling the claims therefore all these things are very important we need to talk about and then keep in mind while preparing the accounts any questions can i can take now uh, hi um, hi gauri uh, am i audible yes yeah uh, so there is one question which came in from uh, nivid chatterji okay mm -hmm. his question is how will be the balance sheet looks differ compared to manufacturing mm. slash banks because it's for an engineering consultancy engineering see engineering consultancy anything i said banks will show cash and bank i said it will be liquidity is of more important for financial institution therefore it will be prepared based on the order of liquidity which means all the liquid assets will come first and property plan capital will be the last in manufacturing entity it is prepared order of permanence which means property plant equipment machinery will come first and cash and bank will come at the end in the balance sheet it asset side in the liability side current asset current liability your trade payable share cap all those will come separately and long term liabilities and share capital equity section which is owners money the business which has share capital and reserves which it has to repay back to the owners is called equity section it's called shareholders funds Okay, thank you. Uh, Nivid, hope uh, your question is answered. So, uh, anybody got any other questions, please post on the Q&A uh, session. Uh, in the meantime, uh, in the meantime, while we wait for other questions, um, I have a question from my own. Uh, so, we are seeing that in the COVID situation, uh, uh, countries are reporting they will be uh, going down on their uh, ratio um, for India it is declared that it will be down to 2.5 where in America they are saying 4.5 how how this will impact a common man you're talking about GB, GDP growth right yeah yeah right you all know what GDP is all about GDP is about production across if the gdp is good the economy is doing good right the gdp is not good means the economy is not doing it's a indicator of how your economy performs this is not a uh, isolated phenomena it's a worldwide phenomena right however things will be in place after every depression there's a boom and after every boom there'll be depression a cycle 2008 we saw a subprime crisis the world market crashed big time and then it recovered this also is a phenomenon like that what goes down has to come up and future is good and a lot of infrastructure with projects will be in taking place all things are being worked out and it will be in place when the infrastructure spending happens automatically economic activity will start happening and it will have a spiraling effect and economy will automatically come back to shape this is a hope and this is the future Thank you. Okay, uh, next we have the question from Krishna Kumar. As a CFO of uh, Virginium uh, project, what is your thought about financials of the project? Please update why there is a delay in the project, if possible. Uh, the project, I am, I'm, I was very passionate and I'm still passionate about the project. How many of you know that the East-West trade line and Virginium is in the main East-West trade line? Any, there's a there's a company called Maersk Sea Line, right? If you go and stand there in Wyndham, you can see every day one ship is passing by. 
if Vindyam port has hold the transshipment hub, they can do a big time. All the cargo in India can on the way become a transshipment hub and we can do a lot of business. Today, Singapore port is the one of the best port in the world. The turnaround time of a container is 12 hours. I repeat, the best port in the world is Singapore, 12 hours turnaround time. In India, JNPT Bombay, it takes 48 hours minimum, not maximum. Can you imagine 48 hours was a 12 hours. So we need to improve a lot on the turnaround time. And once we do that, and this Viridium port is a great project. Why? Because it's a natural port, natural depth, no dredging year on year, unlike other ports. This is a natural 22 feet deep, which means a triple E ships can easily call in, which means the latest vessel which is owned by Maersk Sealand can berth easily. 18,000 TEUs. TEUs means total equivalent units. 20 foot container is a way all the goods are containerized. It's called TEUs. The unit of measure in container ships called TEUs. So it can hold 18,000 TEUs as against currently in Valar Padam, a ship with only 7,500 TEUs only can berth or call because it is not as deep as William. So when the port comes in, it is one of the natural best port friendship and hub. The, uh, the economy will change more than the financial IRR. The economic IRR is huge and the benefit is huge. Coming to the cost side and delays, delays as usual, you know, the challenge is building in the breakwater. Breakwater is, is called the uh, we need to build a civil structure to tranquilize the sea, uh, sea in order to make the entry of the vessel easy. To make it easy for the vessel to enter the berth, we need to put in a breakwater. The construction is taking time. Why? Because we need to bring in huge boulders and rocks. The rocks are available within Trivandrum. We are sourcing rocks from the neighboring states and it needs to be transported through barges. It's taking time. Hopefully, this will be sorted out. Okay. Um, thank you, Gauri. Uh, the next question is from Abu Bakr. How about borrowing done before lockdown? Is it for projects or operation? I think for both. He haven't mentioned it. Right. I'll, I'll explain for projects and operations. First coming to operations. Operations, all the borrowing costs will be charged as interest in the income statement. Right, whether lockdown, no lockdown, it's not a it's not a problem. However, if you are putting an insurance claim, you need to segregate, identify the cost incurred during the lockdown period, so that the insurance company can be sure. Okay, this cost incurred is it's a, the cost of claim. For projects, standard allows you to capitalize the borrowing cost if you incur, incurred for a capital project. Any borrowing cost incurred prior to lockdown period for the project can be treated as cost of the project, any interest during the lockdown period cannot be capitalized. It has to be charged off in the income statement. It, yeah, all interest costs can be capitalized only when the capital project commences construction activity and it ceases as and when the commercial operation starts. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, uh, the next question is from Vasudevan. How financial statement and company business strategy are related? Can we get strategic information from financial statement? Definitely, yes. Financial statements are the backbone of any industry. Trend analysis will be performed. If you go to any fund house, what they take, they take the published accounts for the past three years and five years, they do the trend analysis. Any outliers will be removed and then we can get an evolve pattern can evolve, right? Based on that, these guys, these fund managers goes to the, they have a management discussion and then they will know it is a lot of public information available in the SEBI site and the management's policy, they will have discussion. Based on that, they will extrapolate the future business and then valuation is done. Depending upon the valuation, the stock prices will move up and down. Therefore, Financial asset, financial statements is a very key indicator for your trend analysis, technical analysis, and both financial analysis. Uh, so, yeah, uh, so in the second part of that question is that by looking into the financial statement, will we be able to understand the company's strategy? 
Yes, because uh, not only FS, the notes accounts is very important. You need to read all those notes in clear detail. That's why. And then a lot of uh, every three months, right? Com listed companies have published the results, annual results, and any key important attribute and decision board decision has to be published in the website of SEBI, which means all the investors or any any stakeholder, any uh, uh, borrower or any for that matter, everybody will have access to the information. It's public information available. They can go and search all the information available publicly in the SEBI website. You can see what the company is going to do and how, what are the future plans. Based on that, all your uh, projections can happen. Projection, balance sheet, income statement, then valuation happens based on that. Okay, okay great. Thank you. Uh, next question is from uh, Nisha. Uh, she had asked, do you recommend any uh, book uh, for, to become a financial, uh, to, to a person who is a, not a financial manager to understand finance and aspects better? There are a lot of books in the market. Uh, see, Indian book, I read uh, Shukla Greval, Bible for accounting, tells you easily. Indian way of accounting. And one, one book I liked in the US way is Keystone Vegan. Excellent intermediate accounting book. Talks about accounting in a layman's term. Currently, I, I've displayed a slide in the, in the presentation. Tips, debit credits, tips. If you debit the asset, it increases. If you credit the asset, it decreases. If you debit the liability, it decreases. If you credit the liability, it increases. If you debit the equity, equity decreases. If you credit the equity, it increases. If you debit the income, income decreases. If you credit the income, income increases. If you debit the expense, expense increases. If you credit the expense, expense decreases. So this, this is a quick tip which you need to bear in mind. If you want, I can explain to you again with the, with the examples. Uh, that would be better if you can just uh, quote an example. For example, uh, assets. All assets typically will have debit balance, right? When you do a building, building will be debit balance. If you, it's shown as a in the accounts a deb debit building and credit expenditure, a credit bank or whatever you're paying cash, right? I said three rules in the beginning, right? Debit what comes in and credit what goes out. Debit what your building comes in, which means your debit building's account and credit what goes in, you're paying money by way of check, which means your cash is re reduced, which means debit building, credit bank. For example, once so if you debit the assets, it increases, you credit the uh, assets, it decreases. Similarly, liability. Liability, what is share, it's typically share capital. Share capital means the money which the business is obligated to pay, return it back with profits and interest to its owners. Therefore, it is liable, it is liable to pay it back to the owners. Therefore, it's called liability. Which means all liability credit what comes debit the receiver, credit the giver. Personal account. Therefore, the business is obligated will have a share capital credit and debit it comes in form of bank. Check probably. So if we introduce money in the capital between debit bank balance, debit bank. Credit share capital because the business is liable to pay the money back to the owners. Therefore, it's a liability. It can be credited. That's for the rule which we explained in the beginning. Same thing with equity. Right? Income, all incomes. If you you you, you make a sale transaction, okay, in that cash sale, for example, thousand rupees. What happens? You are you getting cash, and you you are sale is a nominal account. You have to bear in mind for. First of all, when a transaction is happened, you should classify what are types of accounts involved in that. Either it's a capital, real account, personal account, or nominal account. In this case, cash sale, 1000 rupees. So, nominal account cash, sorry, nominal account sale, real account cash. Then go back to the rule, debit what comes in, which means you're getting money. So, debit cash, 1000, credit Sale is a credit nominal account, credit on incomes and gains. Suppose sale credit thousand rupees. So again, cash sale thousand means debit what comes in, credit all incomes and gains. You got me? There are two types of accounts involved. One is a real account, other one is a nominal account. Suppose you're doing credit sale, for example, thousand rupees, which means what trade receivable is a part of real account. Debit what comes in, which means you have to debit receivables. Again, nominal account sale, credit sale. 
salary is paid in cash for the month of March 100,000 rupees. What happens here? One is the cash, other one is salaries. Two accounts. Cash is a real account. Salary is a expenditure. Expenditure falls on a nominal account. Therefore, debit all expenses and losses, which means his salary is expense. Therefore, salary debit, credit what goes out. Your bank balance reduces by way by, by your payment. Therefore, salary is debit, credit bank. Salary is being salary is paid for the month of March under thousand rupees. Am I clear? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's better. So uh, next <laughs> question is uh, that question is from uh, question is from Janita. Uh, what is, the question is what is the difference between an unaudited financial result? and balance sheet of a company published in newspaper hmm. every quarter companies are obligated to publish the unaudited results to the they have to file to this securities exchange board of india it's a leasing agreement all shares which are traded in bombay stock exchange have to abide by the listing rules one of the listing rule is yeah, they have published the unaudited result every three months we call audit audit happens either six months or 12 months Gen typically audit happens after the accounts are closed for a period of 12 months which is first april to 31st march however every quarter they do quarterly accounts which is not audited by the auditors but reviewed maybe therefore it's unaudited we don't express an opinion there whereas in 12 months accounts where we go and do audit we, we express an opinion either true and fair opinion or a qualified opinion or a disclaimer in the unaudited results, you will not find any alter signature. Whereas in the altered account, you will find the accounts are signed off by the company auditor, along with his management people, chairman, MD, CFO, and auditor will sign. Whereas in unaudited results, auditor will not sign off the accounts. Okay. So, um, uh, so the next question is from Rajiv uh, Ramachandran. He is from a manufacturing industry, and ideally, how much cash flow ratio to be considered in COVID time? Is his question. Uh, which kind of industry is in uh, manufacturing industry? Man what kind of manufacturing is it? Uh, cement, metals. Uh, that's... See, generally, see today, COVID means you, you almost the activity is closed, but you have fixed obligations like salaries, rents, and utility bills. Which means you must have at least three months lockdown period. Means you must have three months cash in hand to meet all fixed expenses, unless he has got monetary from banks. Like you can, you can ask for deferment or partial payment of salaries. Which means you should have at least two months obligations in hand minimum to ensure that you are stuck with the working capital issue. So it's fair to say that at least two months. At least minimum two. And today there are ways and means of securing finances in bank. A lot of banks have come out with very innovative way of financing this COVID uh, tough times. There are a lot of banks coming up with a lot of credit schemes and liquidity is being pumped. And uh, RBI is taking active action in this to uh, ensure the banks have enough money to lend to the borrowers to tide over this uh, crunch. Okay. Okay. Uh, next question is very specific related to the project. So the next question is from Bhuvan. Uh, his question is, if we don't have a chance to work with finance in our project, how do you recommend us to systematically gain knowledge on finance? Is it there any way to taking online courses or something? A lot of online courses available. Uh, good question, but all finance people should know because every, every day is money. Project every day project operation is money, and every uh, scope change is money. Every delay is money. Every claim is money. Right? All money ultimately ends up in accounts. Unless you have, you don't have an appreciation of financial impact of decision which you take on day to day basis. It's tough to ensure success of the project. The project, by the way, will not fail on the last day if it, it fails on the first day if you don't plan properly. Therefore, it is utmost important. You must have a finance guy in the team, in the project team. Fortunately, I was in my employment in the Middle East, and I was a finance manager projects. I used to be in all the committees, so all decisions are taken with the finance team concurrence. Therefore, you must have a financial background or a finance guy in the project team to ensure 
that you don't incur additional unnecessary project costs in terms of claims or scope changes and any uh, uh, unwarranted, unclaimed uh, or unbudgeted expenditure. Because budget control is very important, not the overall budget, the line by line budget is very important. And you're transferring some, some most of the times, overall budget will be okay, but line by line, it will be a mess. So therefore, people will be clever to transfer budget within, within the line items. That shouldn't happen. Okay, fine. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the next one uh, is quite interesting question. Uh, this is from Abraham Daniel. Um, he is asking, how will we assess the goodwill of an oil company at this time of COVID, where the crude oil price had gone minus, but can come back to a positive after a few months? Let me tell you all good, goodwill is goodwill only when it is latent. Goodwill becomes bad will when it becomes patent. Today, there's no goodwill for oil companies. Am I clear? Goodwill is goodwill only when it is latent. Goodwill becomes a bad will when it becomes patent. Therefore, typically, company having goodwill in the balance sheet is not a good sign. Which means certain unallocated costs, which, which they could allocate to any tangible assets, they are capturing in goodwill. Which means any company having goodwill will not be viewed positively by analyst. Okay, probably uh, on the same lines, Sujit Kumar also asked, how is goodwill valuation done? There are uh, many methods available for valuing goodwill. It's a very technical subject. It talks about what is value in use and what is realizable value in future. The difference between those two can be capitalized as goodwill. As I said, it is not ideal if the company is doing good, they should not have goodwill in the balance sheet because goodwill represents the gap between the tangibles and intangibles. You cannot, you will not find goodwill in any of the accounts. If you see any high, high profit, good, good doing, I mean, company doing very well business, they will not have goodwill as an item in the balance sheet. Goodwill is, is only a, a feel which is realized in terms of takeover or acquisition. However, this is not discovered in the balance sheet. Okay. Okay. Uh, next question is again from Abu Bakr. Uh, his question is Do you have standard templates for financial statements? Yes. Yes. There are standard. There's something called Inter, 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 Indias, International in, Indian Accounting Standards. There's something called AS1, which talks about the format of preparation of these accounts, which, which how the way you should present it. Presentation of financial statements. India is one. Uh, okay, Abu Bakr, I just want to uh, respond back to your question on um, uh, asking about the PPT. So what we will be doing is that we will be providing the recording of this session uh, to you guys through email. So uh, that will be made available for you guys. Okay, next question is from Rem Shankar. Most of the companies mentioning pay cuts is this one of the five qualifiers expense expenses responsible for such action? Uh, pay cuts is a, is a, is a see expense is a qualifier. So if pay cut is there, it will it will be it will be less expense. You can't you, you cannot enforce pay cut, but if it is voluntary, probably business either you today get hundred, tomorrow zero, or today you get fifty, tomorrow fifty, day fifty, which is fine for you. The decision which the company and the employees to take jointly for the benefit of their future salary cuts is a problem is a, is, a, is a expenditure salary cut is a, today you are deferring only the uh, going concern for a longer period of time if you want to pay today 100 percent salary tomorrow there's no business so what happens therefore pay cut is in, inevitable okay 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 uh, the next question is from jay kumar is covid will increase the scope of M and A in near future, will it be a positive risk for big financial investment company? Uh, it depends on which sector we are talking about. Generally, M and A's will happen in time in times like this because the big guys will will be eyeing for small people who are able to sustain this stress. Probably they will sell out, right? So it, it will be available cheap valuations. However, not all will be taken in the market. Only one. Just only those which 
good business model will be up for grabs right this is a good a good time for them because companies with a lot of cash will be eyeing for all the takeovers or mergers during because stress times they may catch the distress sale therefore this is a good time for m and s and we need to be extremely careful in how they do this m and s the swap ratios which is how all those things have to be agreed upon which is very critical and technical subject okay uh, so there is a huge uh, request for the uh, books name to be repeated uh, so i would request gauri shankar to just write down the name in the chat name of the book in the chat so that i can share it with everyone the chat you can just type it and uh, mention uh, i will i will do that uh, is rl gupta mc shukla and the american name i need to bring my book and uh, i'll i'll put in the email so that you can share it with the participants sure sure sure, sure. okay yeah uh, that's fine uh, next question is from sunil um, are there uncertainty model modeling technique which can be used in budgeting uh, budgeting to be honest is a planning tool right while while if you before budgeting the parameters of budgeting will will have to will have to have uncertainty uncertainty models like when we did the budgeting we use something called a probabilistic model as against the deterministic model best case mean case and worst case we do a probability distribution curve using monte carlo simulations that will help you in getting the uh, better idea of your uh, risk pattern for the future excel will have certain tools like we can we run a certain tool along on top of excel to do the monte carlo simulation which will simulate a thousand times and tell you the uncertainty the simple cases the best case worst case scenario is very very deterministic whereas we will use this monte carlo simulation to do a probabilistic de determination of your risk profile in the future budgeting techniques will have to include that from now on because things are not like before things are different the way we work the way we do business will change drastically okay uh, okay next question uh, since we are running out of time i will only pick a couple more questions uh, the next one is from prasoon uh, if an organization is ebita positive can we say it is financial health is okay financial health there are ratios which will indicate the financial strength the first of all we should take the current ratio which means your current liability current assets divided by current liability should be one some rule which means you run a working capital problem right only and then you have to check the going concern you are you should have to have a accumulated loss situation which means then you are having a going concern issue merely looking at abit is one issue but if you look you must look at the current ratios your net profit ratios your gp ratios and not in isolation as a trend if you look any ratio in isolation it will not mean anything whereas if you compare 3 years 2 years then it will have good discussion good debate point then you can you can assess by giving a one year ratio it doesn't mean any, it's a mere number what will you do with the one years ratio 2019 current ratio is 1 so it was 2 in 18 it is 1 now then obviously anybody will ask why it become one then you start asking question you got you, you you can drive down drill down deeper and then find out what's the problem giving a number in isolation will not make any sense financials will be always is comparatives if you look at any standard balance sheets or income statement it will be with current year previous year therefore you can compare the earnings per share the current ratio all those can be compared any number in isolation by itself will not give you an indicator it has to be compared over period of time and future projections okay okay uh, the final question uh, the since uh, we are running out of time um, there are a couple more questions that needs to be answered but i will take uh, pick one last question uh, sir uh, actually there are two questions which are interrelated so i will read out both on uh, the first one is from bijoy joseph what is your suggestion for companies in this covid situation to minimize the loss and sail through this situation okay in same lines vimal kumar also asked there are several it startups on verge of closure how best we can close the account books for the year so that the companies 
he said good books so that company assume your operations in unforeseen future okay i will answer this in two parts first question how to do first austerity measure we need to now think spend properly cash is king conserve cash right wherever previously you in how many time typically session like this will be held in hotels today we are doing the next sitting in the home so what the cost only internet cost so what stuff unnecessary travels unnecessary expenditure you need to analyze everything threadbare and see do only what is required or need to be done no nice to haves luxury is gone you need to be extremely critical about what is spending one rupee matters you need to be extremely critical therefore you need to ensure that what is what will add to my results will be done wherever we wherever you can do austerity measure please do there typically i mean what i'm today previously i was doing one set printing today i do both side printing we need to do all those kind of one one cent will increase your profit big time and coming back to startups right startups will have typical issues you need to have uh, good people with you to do accounting or you can outsource it to people where you need not have your own accounting team but typically outsource it so that at reasonable cost they will deliver good accounting stuff books on time so that you need not worry about all this compliance and all those accounting issues you concentrate on core business which is it leave it to the experts for the accounting to be done so that it's easy for you easy for them and makes your life easy yeah okay thank you i think that very much explain uh, now i would like like to invite uh, kk to close of the session okay mm -hmm. thank you and uh, thank you uh,